In this video, we are going to take a look at energy flow and chemical reactions and take a look at a variety of different ways that we can represent thermochemical equations. Before we get into that though, we need to start with some definitions. So when we look at chemical reactions and we look at energy that's flowing between the chemical reaction and everything else, we talk about either the system or the surroundings. So the system is our chemical reaction. So our system would be, usually it's in aqueous solution, but it is the actual balanced chemical reaction that you can write for that particular system. The surroundings then is everything else. That includes the water that the reaction is taking place in. And that's gonna be really important to remember in subsequent videos. The next definition we have is enthalpy change. This is represented by a delta H with an X, and I'm gonna talk about the X in a minute. Basically, enthalpy is the same as the energy. And so enthalpy changes are the amount of heat energy that's either taken in or given out in a chemical reaction. Now, we use the X to represent many things. Basically, this is either the reaction or the type of reaction that's happening. And so we kind of designate an enthalpy change for a variety of different ways. So it could just be reaction, could be combustion, evaporation, solution. Like there's all sorts of X's that you are going to see throughout energy changes and thermochemical equations. The, finally, the standard enthalpy change has this little symbol that's like a circle with a line through it. This is just enthalpy changes that are measured at standard conditions. Now, technically the definition for standard conditions is 100 kPa, and that's the only requirement but many of them are measured at room temperature at 298 Kelvin. Although technically that 298 Kelvin is not part of the actual definition. So let's get into a little bit more about exothermic and endothermic reactions and what's happening with the energy in those particular systems. An exothermic reaction is one where heat energy is transferred from the system to the surroundings. So it's coming out of the system and into the surroundings. That means the surroundings are going to get hotter. That's why we're showing a red thermometer here. And when we're showing this transfer, those delta H values are always going to be negative. So negative just means it's going from the system to the surroundings. It's a convention that we use. We can represent exothermic reactions in a variety of different ways. So these are thermochemical equations. And so we're looking at the reaction of carbon and oxygen reacting to give CO2 here. This is a reaction that is exothermic. So we could have a representation where the delta H value per mole is just given beside the reaction. So in this case, it's negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And that means for every one mole of C that reacts with one mole of O2 is going to produce one mole of CO2. And that will give out negative 393.5 kilojoules of energy. You could also put the energy term in the reaction itself. For exothermic, energy is a product. And so you would write it as plus the energy term. And this is now not negative. The fact that it's a product means that the energy is being given off. Okay, so it, it's not a negative value when it's written within the chemical reaction. And we also drop the moles because now we have stoichiometric ratios here. The final way we can represent this is using what's called an enthalpy. Oh, it would help if I could write it properly. Okay, enthalpy uh, level diagram. 
And so this is an enthalpy level diagram here. Uh, important to note that we've got delta H on our y-axis. That's really important to include. And what we do is we show reactants and products, and then we show how the energy is changing within the reaction itself. So for exothermic reactions, the reactants have more enthalpy or energy than the products do. And so that delta H change is a negative value. It's going down. So we would show the arrow going down from reactants to products with the delta H value written beside it. So that's just one other way that you can represent a thermochemical equation. Now endothermic reactions are the opposite. So they are ones where heat energy is transferred from the surroundings to the system. So it's coming from the surroundings into the system. And because you're losing energy in the surroundings, the surroundings are going to get colder. These all have delta H values of positive. So that means if you see a positive value, it means that energy is flowing from the surroundings to the system, or it is an endothermic reaction. Similar to exothermic reactions, we can represent these reactions in a couple of ways. So the first way, similar, we've got our reaction written here with our delta H beside it. Note that it's a positive value here. Or we can write the energy term within the reaction itself. And in this case, energy is always a reactant for an endothermic reaction. Again, there's no negative or positive values in here. We always put energy terms into positive values within a reaction. And then we also drop the moles because we are representing stoichiometric ratios here. The enthalpy level diagram looks very similar, except now that we have reactants below products. And so the delta H is pointing up, and that's because it's endothermic, so reactants have less energy than the products do. Finally, because enthalpy reactions, or sorry, enthalpy changes are given in kilojoules per mole, and we can put them into the equations, we can do stoichiometry with them. So in this particular example, we're given the reaction N2 plus 3H2 reacts to give 2NH3. And we're asked if we're given a delta H of negative 98.1 kilojoules per mole, how much energy is given off when we have 222.4 grams of nitrogen reacting? So let's start how we always start. We need the number of moles of nitrogen. So that's going to be mass over molar mass. And so we got 222.4 over 28.02. So that gives us a number of moles of 7.9371 and so on moles. Now what we need to recognize here, setting up a ratio, is we can set it up where we've got for every one mole of N2, we're producing... 91.8 kilojoules of energy. And so if we have 7.9371 moles of nitrogen, we want to figure out how many um, kilojoules of energy we're producing. So this is how we set up our ratio. And then that gives us, if we round off to significant digits, negative 729 kilojoules. So that means when 224 grams, sorry, 222.4 grams of nitrogen is reacting, we are giving off 729 kilojoules of energy. So very simple to use stoichiometric ratios with thermochemical equations. That's it then for this video. We'll see you in the next one.